morning, good afternoon, good day, everyone. <laughs> this is Donnie with Santa Goose Rescue. I am um, at one of the areas where we hunt. I hunted this morning and I went in in the dark. I'm not real familiar with this area, it's a new spot. Um, I'm at the creek right now. Gonna find somewhere to set down. We're gonna do some articles here. Um, but uh, coming in in the dark, I couldn't see where I was going. And going by my map, but they burned this area. They burned all the brush. They didn't burn right here at the creek because we have cypress and other trees that uh, they don't want to burn. Look how pretty that is. I'm going to find somewhere I can set down and uh, mount the camera. And we're going to do some articles. Hopefully nobody show up and um, mess us up. For some reason when people see, see you with a camera, see you filming, they got to come over and see what you're doing. <laughs> but it's all good. No, uh, no bad intention. They're just curious. And we've actually picked up some more um, people to join our YouTube family from that exact thing. And normally all this right here is underwater. Sure is pretty. I love the swamp. I think we may be able to go right up here. It's like a nice long crooked tree to lay on. I'm always amazed at just how beautiful it is out here. Guys, let me get set up somewhere and um we're going to do some articles. Thanks to Brother Don Moore hooking us up like he always does. Look at a big cypress knee right here. Isn't that pretty? That's what all these are, these pointed things you see sticking up. These are all cypress knees. This one. Um, here's one. Yeah, all of that cypress knees. What happens when the water gets up, it, it'll just cover the tops of them. And you come in here with a boat, you'll tear your boat motor up on them things. And they are hard. This one is about dead. But they are definitely hard. Let me uh, figure out a set down spot. I think the sun's going to glare on the screen if I face it that way. Legs too short for me to be high stepping like that. I might be able to. I might be able to stick my camera stick in one of these holes, like right there. Maybe. Let me find somewhere to get set up, and uh, we'll get to going with the articles. Someone's coming. Gonna be all right. I'm gonna find a spot in here somewhere. We can sit down and uh, we'll get started. Guys, I'm gonna move over here. We got this, um, this guy in this truck just sitting there and it's a diesel. So it's, um, it'll definitely be in the background. So while he's sitting there, I'm going to mosey over here and see if we could find a spot. Look at the size of that. That is a massive tree. Beautiful. They're so pretty out here. I love the swamp. Love it. Don't love the mosquitoes that come with it, though. Big 
little double right there. Jeez, that thing's about 12 foot wide, the trunk of this one. Wow. There's a big log right over there. The problem is the sun is right there and I want to get the creek, it's so pretty, but I'm not going to be able to get the creek um, from this side of the bank, I don't believe. Looks like a, another slough back there. That stuff, this water right here in front of us is going to be nasty. It's going to be hard to walk through that. Well, see the white truck up there? to the left side of that giant tree in front of us. You can see it through the trees. Um, oh, that creek is amazing. This spot that I'm at right now, I'm, I'm really close to Choctahatchee River. This is Holmes Creek. You know, get you a boatload of catfish, Holmes Creek is full of them. If you stay within that first three quarters of a mile or so from Chottenhatchee River, you can catch some, uh, some nice channel cats and flatheads in there. You know, a few blue cats, but you can get them anywhere from 10 pounds to 35 pounds in there. That little old narrow creek, you find them curves where the current's really bubbling up. It's washing away under the bank. It's like a cave in there. And uh, some of them spots are maybe 30 foot deep. And you drop you down a live bait, down to the bottom and hang on. All right, he's finally pulling off. There's a spot down here that I can I might be able to go and, and film the creek. That's the second truck that's pulled down here and just sat there. Such a pretty area. Just people want to come and enjoy the beauty of it. You guys uh, hunting, it will be slowing down here um, soon, really, really soon. We have for the public land that where we hunt, it closes on the 12th. And the private properties where we hunt, it closes on the 26th. It's the 19th for people who use rifle. People who use muzzleloader, it closes the 26th. And so that'll, that's, the end of our hunting on the 26th of February, as far as deer hunting. We'll still be um, uh, pig hunting. I think I know where I'll go. Right down here, there's a little uh, canoe launch. And it's for canoes and kayaks and little small boats that you can launch by hand. Uh, you're not allowed to pull a vehicle down in here. Not, not right here, not on the trail. And this is uh, this area. This is part of, there's my truck, part of Choctahatchee River Wildlife Management Area. This is part of it. So you have to abide by the, the rules here. I know they do enforce them. People still come out here and trash it and tear up the place. We can walk down the bank right here, uh, 15 yards, 20 yards, and there's deer rubs all over. This place is just ate up with deer. 
Look how pretty that is. But we're going to do some articles and just talk to you and let you know what's going on. Uh, just an update. Update of sorts. Okay, the sun is right there. So, I wish I could. I want to film it that direction, but I may have to do it this way. That's pretty too. There's nowhere dry to sit. <laughs> All of this stuff is wet and it's covered in slime. This is normally underwater. Hmm. That's right. We have some pictures too. And so, uh, we'll, um, we'll figure it out. I may have to turn the camera and then show you the pictures. I think that's what I'll probably end up doing. I'm gonna set this where there's no glare on it. All right, guys, I'm doing this in real time. Um, and the reason I came over here, I've got a pretty wide choice of areas to do this. But the reason I'm doing it here is because we have had activity right across where the camera's shining right now. I'm going to zoom it in a little bit. This is the DJI Action 3. This is the camera I'm filming with. And I've got the DJI wireless mic connected to it, so I hope the sound is all right. I'm still learning this camera. So far, I love it. When it comes to low light, no, it is not as good as the GoPro is in low light situations. But for everything else, in my opinion, it's a better camera. And I absolutely love it. But across the creek right there, where the camera is pointing right now, we have had activity. Let me see if, I don't know if this is, is it going to be level? My camera is so crooked right now. Yes. That's horizon steady is what I got it set on. All right. I'm going to get right here, give you guys something to look at. Um, you may or may not see anything over there. I doubt you will during the day. Um, it's normally early morning, late afternoon. In my experience, um, with the exception of one encounter that I had, which happened at about two in the afternoon. And that was not far from where I'm at. That was um, about a mile, mile and a half from where I'm at right now. But it was that side of the creek. It was definitely on that side, just about um, due south of us, I think, southwest of us. I'd have to pull the map up to be sure. But from that area where I had that encounter, if I walk through the swamp right there where the knocking had happened, I'll come out right there where the camera's aiming. We'll be literally right there. I'll do a swim across the creek and I'll be on this side. But all right, guys, we're going to do a couple of them. I'm sorry to drag this out. Um, I've got my notebook here. There's no way to do this without you guys hearing the papers. But we're going to do what we've got to do. All right. This one is titled, Will Cryptids Attempt to Open Doors on Your Vehicle? And Are They an Asset of the Military? The date of this article was June 2017. The location was a road in the woods of northern Michigan. And the information source for this article is eyewitness testimony and federal authorities investi and federal authorities investigation and threats. The northern Michigan encounter of 2017. In 2017, Joe Barger a six-year Army veteran was transporting 43,000 pounds of paper 
from a mill in northern Michigan through a forest on a typical route and encountered a dog man on an evening in June. He had never heard of the cryptid before the encounter, and that lasted around 20 seconds. I would swear on the Bible as a Christian that these facts are true. While driving, Barger noticed he had an air leak and wanted to fix it before he got too far into the forest part of the route. He stopped and found the leak in the back brake chamber of the trailer. It's very common for semi-drivers to have air leaks and to stop and to get out to fix it or find it on their own. While under the trailer and fixing the problem, he got a bad feeling and started hearing vocalizations in the woods he had never heard before and were not normal sounds. I was hearing unnatural sounds I had never heard before. There was still plenty of daylight left to see, but I couldn't see anything in the woods. I figured it was a bear. Going up a hill, I looked to the right side mirror and I noticed it was darker than it should be. There was a wolf head the size of my window in my mirror and my windows were down. I was going around 25 miles per hour at that point and this thing was stooping down on two legs to look inside my cabin through the open passenger window. I'm at nine feet high off the ground sitting in my seat. Its hands were scratching the windowsill on my door handle with its claws. That made this dog man 10 feet tall. Other personal experiences related, uh, relate how cryptids like dogmen have been known to chase and slam up against a moving vehicle in an attempt to open the door using the handle if it's unlocked and pull the victim out. So all doors must be locked. It had a lot of teeth and they were brilliant white with three inch long fangs on the top and bottom. Solid black with pointed ears, amber eyes, and human-like hands 14 inches long. It was at least 10 feet tall because it had to stoop, <clears throat> because it had to stoop down to look into my right semi-window. Its amber eyes were darting all over the place and looking at me. I would describe the look on its face as mad and determined to get me. Imagine being alone in the woods in a large truck that's not very maneuverable and a 10-foot dogman is looking at you through a side open window. I remembered I had a 45 Colt handgun. <clears throat> Excuse me. Let me start that and over. <clears throat> I remembered I had a 45 Colt handgun strapped to my waist and I shot it two times and it went down sliding into the weeds. I'm sure I hit it because of it being at such close range, perhaps in one of its eyes. This thing was huge, its head was huge, and it was all black except for the teeth. I wasn't panicked, but I was the most scared I've ever been in my life. Wanting to make sure this creature was dead, about a mile up the road he found a spot large enough to turn his truck around. Five minutes had passed and the dog man was gone. In its place was a stopped jeep with two people. He was concerned and warned them about being in a place potentially dangerous, stepping out of his semi-truck to talk to them for a while. Three months later, federal interrogation and threats. Three months later, he was detained at a scale house and told to wait for authorities to arrive. When federal authorities showed up, they were very intimidating and angry. He explained this in a video. I didn't know what was going on. The federal authorities said, you killed one of our assets, and this is how things are going to go down. They didn't say what he had killed, but Barger knew the only thing he had shot recently was that dog man in his truck. This cryptid was their property, and they wanted me to stop talking about it as they found out who I was from my narration in my video. They threatened me, took my gun, and shut my bank account off for a while. I had stopped talking about it until recently. I believe this creature is a tool the military uses for some operation of some kind, and if they don't keep it under wraps, it won't be a useful tool for them anymore. Interestingly, this encounter is one of just a few where people have seen not just the run-of-the-mill soldier dogman that ranged from six and a half to eight feet tall, but something altogether different and a more sinister and more sinister, a nine or 10 foot tall, solid black alpha dogman, a pack leader, thought to be very ancient. 
Is it true these creatures are considered a military tool or asset, as was told to Joe Barger by angry federal authorities after he shot one? Are these creatures under military control? Have some escaped and are rogue? Was a larger 10-foot alpha dog man used to attempt to pull this trucker from a semi due to it being a bigger vehicle, and for what purpose, just to kill him? The dog man has been in the mind of Michigan residents for 135 years, starting in, 19, in 1887, when two lumberjacks saw what they described as a huge man with a dog's head. They will try to get into your vehicles, into your tents, and pull you out. One man on a motorcycle was chased down, was chased by one down the road, and when it dropped to all fours, it almost caught him a second time. Another man in Oklahoma, while fishing with a few family members, had a dog man approach and give an evil laugh and then walk away, only to later slam the side of their exiting vehicle and attempt to open the door using the door handle. It's believed recent mutilations to victims found lying dead outside their uh, vehicles in ditches, etc., is from these creatures luring them out of their vehicles by either playing injured or running in front to get them to stop or ditch their vehicle. Then the person is pulled out of the vehicle and killed, or killed when they exit their own vehicle to investigate. If you see anything like that and you're in an isolated area and alone, don't stop and get out. Alert the authorities of the location and let them handle it and get away. There may be more than one creature, and death may be slow and agonizing. It's not worth taking the chance to investigate a situation like that yourself. These creatures are so terrifying looking that it can stop hearts. These things are very dangerous, and sooner or later you may end up on their food chain. Maybe not right away if they're around your property, but sooner or later something bad can happen. They are not your friends. One man said he had a dog man coming up to his house. He fed it, talked to it, and it seemed to talk back. It would tap on the windows. He seemed to be convinced it wouldn't hurt anything. This man was killed sometime later. He was shredded so badly and dismembered that they had to bring a front loader in to scoop up his remains from the ground to get rid of them. Lastly, if you are driving at night in a wooded or isolated area, and are alone or even with others you must and and you must stop for any reason make sure all of your doors remain locked at all times and that's the end of that article very fascinating as all of the articles we get from brother Don are but it, you know it's Jeff and I've seen one of them creatures it was small but I, I don't want to see another one. I don't want to see a big one. And as far as you being at the bottom of the food chain when it comes to these beans, yep, absolutely, I have no doubt about it. And whether or not you believe, you know, that's, that's solely up to you. But if you look back in history, back to the time of the, the Great Pyramid and the Sphinx, and even back before those times, they had paintings cave paintings that uh, they're finding etched stone where their people are carving out and painting these human-like beings with a head of a wolf, head of a Doberman pincher. You know, they didn't have ways to document things, you know, thousands of years ago, even hundreds of years ago. And so they painted, they carved, painted, etched. They got, they put it out. They, they, documented in their own way which without technology that's all they had but they were documenting something and it's the same descriptive uh, being human-like with a dog head from all corners of the world there's something going on there's absolutely something going on all right we're going to step into a second one let me pause this just for a minute All right, guys, sorry about that. I had to cough, and I didn't want to do that on camera. Okay, I'm just going to change the view a little bit. I'm hoping, um, okay, 
just to give you a little bit of a different view. All right, the second one. Oh, let me see, what is this one? Okay, and we, we've got some long ones. I'm not going to be doing those right now, but we are going to be getting to those. All right. This one's titled, Woman and Baby Protected from a Mutant Dogman by a Pack of Three Dogmen as a Return Favor. The years, uh, it was about the summer of 2017 and the summer of 2022. And the location was the Black Hills of South Dakota, Millette County. Information source is eyewitness testimony. The first encounter. I was on a hike in the Black Hills and I came across what I first thought was a young wolf. It was in pain and I noticed its, I noticed its back paw was caught in a trap and it could not free itself. I would later figure out this was a juvenile dogman, not as strong as an adult one. I didn't know what to do. If I help it, it could bite me, but if I don't, it can starve to death or chew its paw off and die. Being a brave soul, I reached down and I freed its back paw from the trap, uh, terrified it was going to bite me. It appeared to be about a year old and weighing about 80 pounds. When I bent down and looked at it, I could almost understand the look in its eyes. With amazement, I was able to release it, still thinking it's a young wolf. It ran off looking back at me once, and I see it no more. Five years later, a terrifying encounter. Five years go by, and I have a son by then who is six months to a year old, and I'm carrying him in a shoulder sling carrier. I'm back hiking in that same location in the Black Hills, the same location I freed the young wolf, the dogman, from a trap. It's a good hike until I get to a certain section of hills where it was V-shaped, like being trapped on three sides. I look up and I see this creature standing up in front of me. It then starts to come down towards me. It had the look of a dogman, but different, mutated and very ugly. Between this mutated dogman and me stood three other dogman creatures. I feel a nudge and one of these dogmen lead me to a safe location while I heard the other two fight with this mutant creature. The dogman that was leading me to a safe location looked back and I noticed it had a scar on its back paw, the same paw that had been in a trap five years ago, the trap I released it from. Seeing the compassion and understanding in its eyes, I realized it was the same creature that I had saved from the trap. It was returning the favor to me. In my case, I was protected by these dogmen from a mutant one of their own kind because I saved the young dogmen and they returned the favor. I never knew they did these kinds of things or that they are capable of compassion. All right, with this one, we do have photos. We got three photos. I'm going to attempt to show them on camera. I don't know how this is going to work out, but we are going to give it a shot. This is one of the many roads in the Black Hills of South Dakota that access the trailheads. Uh-oh, something's coming out there. Thought I heard palmettas rustling and then the birds took off. Okay, this one is one of many cave entrances in the Black Hills boarded shut to the public, possibly hiding locations for dogmen. Maybe. I could see where somebody would be tempted to go into one of them caves if it weren't boarded up. I'd be interested to see what it looks like inside. I'd rather somebody else go in there and film it and then I could watch the video. <laughs> All right, and this is a V-shaped canyon in Black Hills like the one the woman and her infant encountered, uh, encountered a dog man, a mutant dog man, who fought with three other dog men. Guys, with this camera, I cannot see the little tiny screen. So I'm guessing, I'm hoping this is good where you can see it. And I think, yep, that's all right. That's it for the pictures on that article. 
All right, guys, the other articles that, that uh, we got from Brother Don, they are long. Um, <clears throat> we will be doing them, but I want to do those on a live show. Oops, stand by just one second. I got a phone call. All right, guys, sorry about that. Um, fixing to wrap it up and head up to the truck. I'll walk down here and uh, is that thing's okay? Let's make sure it wasn't zoomed in. I don't want to get too close because it is slick. It's about four foot deep right here, and I do not want to go in the water right now. I went and got me some new boots. I got some snake boots. I actually got some good ones. Um, guys, these are normally $300. They're Danners. And if any of you are near Dothan, Alabama, there is a, <clears throat> a sporting goods store called Southern Outdoors, Southern Outdoor Sports, I think it is. All of their boots, all of them, um, the kids snake boots, the, all the hunting boots, all of their boots and all of their clothing is 50% off. I had to use a credit card to get these, but I got these boots and two pairs of battery operated socks, one for me and one for Kim. And I got something else. I can't remember what else I got, but the total was 170. And that's unheard of. And those snake boots I got at home right now, the ones that split on me, that's, I've had three pairs of them in two years, all three split. Um, they are lacrosse boots, and I paid $149 for them. They're garbage. But anyhow, if you're near Dothan, Alabama, um, they're selling out really quick of the common sizes. They've got a lot of uh, like 12, size 12 and up men's size 10 and up women's uh, they got a lot of the children and the smaller women's boots but it's well worth it you can get a 150 dollar pair of boots for 75 bucks and right now that helps that'll help all of us but I, I had to get some boots i have no waterproof snake boots and where i hike at in summer when the snakes are out is it's wet it's swamp like that and if you ever get your feet wet and you walk for about seven or eight hours with wet feet um, you're gonna have a hard time walking for about a week until the blisters heal up but anyhow um i'm getting out of here we are chris had called me that's who called me just now we're going hunting at a different location uh, one of his properties that he manages and he's got three very large bucks on camera the last three four days in a row all day yesterday and this morning and we're going to go in there uh, chris myself and tom we're going to spread out and try to tackle these um these deer i don't know could y'all hear that that may be a deer there's pigs here too at this property. I don't know if y'all could hear of a knock because I'm using the wireless mic. It doesn't pick up. It's got noise cancellation, I guess, noise canceling. And it doesn't normally pick up anything unless it's super loud. It sounded like it's about where the little pines are right out. Not these, this one right here, but the big group of them. It may have been a deer. It was an animal of some sort. Um, but I'm going to get out of here. Guys, thank you all. Thank you all for hanging out with me today. And uh, we're going to be throwing some videos out. Be pumping them out here very soon. Um, hunting season's starting to slow. I only need one more deer. I was needing two. I got one a few days ago. He had half his horns were busted off, but he still had five points. And uh, he was an older deer, thank God. So I got to get one more. And if I get one of these that Chris is getting on the cameras over there right now, um, these are big, big deer. Uh, what most people 
would um, would mount, have them mounted by taxidermists. They are trophy animals. I'm interested in the meat aspect of it. We got to get one more, and I feel much better harvesting a four-year-old mature buck than I do a two-year-old baby. But anyhow. I'm going to get out here and get going. I love each and every one of you. God bless you. Y'all have a wonderful afternoon. And for those that have um, recently joined our family here, thank you. It's all of you guys as a collective that makes this what it is. And I'm so blessed to be a part of it. So thank you all. And I will definitely be seeing you guys very soon. We're doing a live show this week. Um, I originally was going to do it tonight. But I don't think I'm going to get home in time. But I'll let you know as soon as I can figure it out exactly when I'm going to be able to do it. I will post a banner so that you know it's coming. But I'll see you guys soon. Take care. Be kind. Be safe. Be blessed. And we'll see you in a little while. Bye-bye. That was it moving again if y'all heard that. Maybe a coyote. Yeah, we'll get out of here. We don't like coyotes.